Here we are with another 15 minutes for accountants and bookkeepers. I need to change the name of this, don't I? Because I always go over 15 minutes and today is no exception. I had the amazing Simon Chaplin. Socks off Simon, if you uh, know the chap. If you don't know him, he is an amazing character. Uh, we talk about how he got into coaching. We talked about how he got into accounting. And we also find out a little bit about uh, some of the techniques that he uses and why he goes firewalking. Um, I loved Simon. I love having a chat with him. And there's some great interaction from the audience as well. So tune in, settle down and enjoy this podcast. And the crowd are going wild. We got Simon Chaplin in the house. Hello, hello. Hello, Ashley. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is, it is afternoon. It is, it, but but we haven't had any lunch, so it's not afternoon, surely. Well, technically, it, um, it's time for but, a beer, perhaps. But we are know. going down the pub for a, for a boo- boozy right. lunch straight afterwards, aren't we? Yes. Uh, Simon, how are you? I am very well. I'm very busy at the moment. There's lots of things going on, which is one of the things we're perhaps going to talk about uh, today. But uh, yes, I'm very well. Thank you. Excellent. Well, so for people that don't know you, I don't know what planet they're on, but if they don't <laughs> know you, if they don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, please, Simon. Um, little old boy born in, uh, well, we've just been talking about it, North Cambridgeshire, South Lincolnshire, Norfolk uh, border. I've been here all my life. Um, I had dyslexia when I was growing up, wasn't particularly academically gifted. Um, didn't know what I wanted to do, uh, stumbled into the world of accountancy and discovered that I had a bit of a knack to it, didn't go to university or anything like that. Um, went through my exams. Uh, at one point, I was the second uh, youngest person in the country to be a qualified accountant and a qualified chartered tax advisor uh, at the same time. I uh, know, wonderful. That's awesome. Uh, that's uh, back in 99, I think that was, just before the millennium. Uh, and in 2002, uh, I acquired an accountancy practice called Greenstones, which I still uh, still own. Just celebrated my 25th anniversary oh, of being at Greenstones. So there's 20 people, uh, 20 people work there. Uh, in a, well, the late 2000s, so 2009, 2010, uh, I got fed up of uh, talking to people about their accounts. The coaching aspect of it was far more interesting. Uh, to me so I started extracting myself out of the practice and uh, coaching and that's where a company called Pull Your Socks Up Simon was created uh, which was a coaching business and then that's now morphed into the accountant's mastermind and there's a whole story behind that as well so now as well as owning Greenstones where I spend roughly one day a week uh, there's a couple of people that uh, look after that practice for me. Um, I now spend my time inspiring, challenging and supporting accountants and their teams to be the very best they want to be through mastermind groups, basically. Fantastic. Fantastic. So and, and this is the thing, right? So so I call this show 50 Minutes for Accountants and Bookkeepers. And so what we're able to show today is you don't have to be an accountant all your life you can change and and do other things but you're still running the accountancy practice you're still doing you know getting that passion but you're also firing another passion which is absolutely superb i'll just quickly say hello to uh johan and uh pavel who are listening in today so hi guys Um, and if anyone's got any questions for simon then then please fire away so you said you got fed up (laughs) so 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 how, how did that happen? Did you wake up one morning and go, oh, I don't want to do this anymore? Or, or you know, what, what, what happened? It was, it was over, a, over a period of years. What I was finding is that the conversation around the accounts, uh, generally speaking, it went one of two ways. Uh, they'd made loads of money and therefore they'd got loads of tax to pay, which they obviously didn't like, or they'd made no money and they was going to go bust. So that, that's the two extremes, admittedly. But it was a continual, the same conversation. At the time, there was stuff going on outside of work in my personal life. I got very much into personal development. I uh, discovered Tony Robbins, did a firewalk, learned NLP off the back of that. I became a chartered uh, hypnotherapist and then got into emotional intelligence. And what was driving me and driving people became passionate, fascinated, absolutely fascinated by it. And because of that, I then got into helping other people, coaching team members. Um, and that's that's where, the, as much as accountancy, 
you can you can help people and it's a fantastic profession you can help people understand the numbers in their business and how they can use those numbers in order to develop the business the coaching aspect of that and the inspiring challenging and supporting people to be the best they want to be is where the real passion lies and ultimately, if I'm going to sort of brag a little bit, Ashley, the fact that I've got the accountancy background that I've now taken into the accountancy, into the coaching world, is it gives me a double-edged sword. And I, I also believe that long term, the profession, as stuff continues to develop and AI and all the rest of it gets implemented, our role as trusted advisors, we're already doing it to a degree, lots of us are listening to clients. As it develops, we're going to turn more into coaches and the better that we can be we're around emotional intelligence and empathy with the customer, the mu much better we're going to be able to serve them going forward. Wow, <laughs> that is brilliant. That, that is absolutely superb because the, the, the thing the thing that I see, because I've, I've been working with accountants and bookkeepers for the last 16 years, the thing I see is you are the most trusted advisor um that, that that people work with you tell you tell your accountant and bookkeeper absolutely everything you don't tell your doctor everything and definitely nothing about your finances but your accountant and bookkeeper absolutely know everything about you and so therefore you've got so much um knowledge that you're able to share with them and help them to get where they're going to so being a coach to to business owners as an accountant is such an obvious step, but it's one that not many accountants see. Is it? Would you agree? I, I, I totally. And, and the re, and it, without being funny about it, it's, it's an easy thing to fall in, fall into because these business owners, they can't talk to the team. They can't talk to the customers. They can't talk to the doctors. The solicitors charge them 6,000 pounds an hour. If they go and talk to them, they can't really talk to the husbands and wives because they don't really understand what it's like to run a business. And when they go to the mates down the pub, then again, they don't really empathize with them. And if they go out networking at BNI or Rotary or stuff like that, they're trying to sell the business. They don't want to talk. So the really, reality of it is most business owners haven't got anybody else to talk to other than their accountant. The bit that scares the accountants, I think, is that they feel as though they have to ask brilliant questions or uh, know know the information and be able to part the information over and mentor rather than coach and the reality of it is is when you're talking most people just need a good listening to to start with so you don't even need to say anything you just listen to them uh, talk and secondly most people just need permission to act so you might have nine, or you might have 10 conversations with customers, nine times out of 10, you're just giving them permission. They're talking through the problem and then they're acting. Every now and again, you have to stop them from doing something stupid. And if it's something stupid, it's, it's got lights on it, flashing, et cetera, et cetera. And all you've got to do is point out the obvious. So it's not that difficult a job. Now, obviously, you need to pay me lots of money in order for me to do it with you, but that's a, that's a separate uh, se separate issue. <laughs> And, and that and that that's the thing isn't it it's and, and this is why i like coaching because you, you, you it's like you say it's just giving people permission and 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 so one of the things that i do obviously i do a lot of linkedin and people turn around to me and go oh yeah but i want to write about that but i can't I go, why can't you and you talk to them about it and they oh all right so i will and they're like oh my goodness and it's, <laughs> and it's like a door opening and, and and you must see this as well with with you know i know some of the guys that are on your mastermind and and i've seen them grow and it, it, it's incredible um so aaron said something about you smashing something yesterday so it says here simon you smashed it yesterday at qbc so that is quickbooks connect it is um, quick good books afternoon connect, aaron yeah. so, so what is he talking about uh, good afternoon, Aaron. Thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, yesterday, I was presenting at uh, QuickBooks Get Connected in uh, Birmingham. We shared uh, 12, excuse me, 12 referral strategies. Well, there's actually a few more than that, but 12 referral strategies in order for accountants to get more uh, referrals. Uh, I have a bit of a bugbear. Uh, as much as I love LinkedIn, I post on LinkedIn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I believe that e external marketing strategies like LinkedIn, top TikTok, blah, 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 uh, reasons or excuses uh, not to do stuff where you are personally held accountable. So if I write something and I stick it on LinkedIn, it's LinkedIn's fault if it doesn't generate any leads. If I do a video for TikTok, it's TikTok's. Uh, if I ask poorly for 
uh, referrals or cross sales, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then it's me that's the problem, and I, I'm I'm exposed. So I get quite uh, passionate about helping uh, accountants and bookkeepers capitalize on what they've already got uh, rather than going out uh, into this big ether of uh, overwhelm that's out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that makes perfect sense, which is why uh, Aaron's saying you smashed it. We've also got a comment from um, his partner in crime. Uh, if only, this is Johan, if only all accountants and bookkeepers were a trusted advisor, you need to be proactive and communicative with clients to be trusted advisors and most aren't. Um, that's a sweeping statement, Johan. Um, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I don't. I don't disagree that in part, but uh, from my perspective, the ones that aren't proactive are the ones that are not having the conversations with the clients. So, the if if, if you're having meetings with customers and you're and you're just asking questions around where they are, they can't help but tell you stuff. Now, so the the, the way you become more pro, proactive, and there's a whole world of stuff around proactivity and what is proactive and what's reactive and all the rest of it. If you are having meetings, telephone conversations with clients about their current situation, you cannot help but be, in my world, be uh, proactive. Uh, but I don't, I don't disagree with Johan that there's lots of them out there, sausage factories that are just churning stuff uh, churning stuff through never even speak to the client it's all done by email etc uh, etc et um, but that over time in my world that's well that's the first lot that technology will replace and is already well on the replay on the way to replacing some of them yeah no good, good, good answer there and, and, and i think that's the thing is we, we we get we get lost in the compliance and and again like you know what we said earlier is you you, you tell you tell your accountant more than you tell your doctor so you know, let's listen and and start and start changing. Uh, Mark's Mark's come up with a good one here. Hi, Mark. Um, <laughs> the irony of the passion he speaks with and says you need to listen, <laughs> and that's it. it. It is all about listening. That, that's what empathy is about, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, so my counter argument to that actually is I'm not currently coaching. I'm currently, uh, absolutely, I'm currently... <laughs> absolutely. This is this is a, a talk show. This is a podcast. Right. We, we we want you to talk. Gosh, it would be terrible if all you did was listen there, wouldn't it? Um. So I want to know about this firewalk. How did you get into Tony Robbins, Simon? Uh, well, again, that's a long story. It involved. Uh, We've got fifteen my... minutes. <laughs> uh, it involves my late mother uh, getting divorced. Uh, and off the back of that, uh, she got a ticket to go to see Tony Robbins and uh, she didn't have anybody to go with. And I was nuts enough to go, uh, not knowing anything about it, really knowing anything about it. Uh, and on the Friday, I rocked up and there was a big hangar at the Excel Center, loads of screaming people, whooping and all that sort of stuff. Very, very out of my comfort zone. Uh, Firewalk was announced. And then I thought, well, I'm here. I might as well do it if I'm going to do it. And um, I went through the firewalk process, learned to step up, et cetera, et cetera. And the fascination then actually became, how is he doing that? How is he communicating in such a way that he's got three, 4,000 people all walking across the coals? And the next two days, the Saturday and the Sunday, uh, for me, became about working out what he was doing, the stagecraft, the, uh, the energy, the, his ability to cry on demand. It was just fascinating. And as I say, that's where the NLP stuff came. And then uh, since then, uh, there's a chap called Sanjay Shah that I now work with, uh, my personal coach. And I've done umpteen firewalks, but from a different energy than that first firewalk with Tony. So um, the energy with Tony was all about courage and being brave and being courageous. Uh, now with Sanjay, it's more about being in love and being at peace with yourself and what it is that you're doing and it carries a different um there's a different clarity to it a, a, a cleansing is probably a, a, a word that i would use uh, and it, as i say it comes from a much more meditative peaceful state than that the first experience with tony back in 2006 whenever it was all right now that is amazing so you didn't even know who tony robbins was I'd, I'd heard of him, but oh, I right, didn't okay. really. Uh, yeah, he was some American doing info commercials or whatever it was. You, you uh, didn't. You didn't think it was that guy from Baldrick. That guy Baldrick. Well, from that, Black yeah, probably crossed my mind. Probably crossed my mind at the time. <laughs> so that that's pivotal, isn't it? Isn't it funny how these things happen? Sliding doors moments. Oh well, uh, massively, and it's the same with uh, how I became an accountant. Uh, again, there's a bit of a longer story to it, but I, I applied. It was early '90s. I was applying for lots of jobs, couldn't get a job. 
Uh, the first opportunity I had, the first interview I got was with an accountancy practice. I walked in, took the interview, uh, got offered the job. I turned the job down in the interview, uh, came out of the office. At the time, I couldn't drive. Uh, so I got in the car with my mum. My mum said, hey, did you get on? And I said, I got the job, but I've turned it down. And with that, my mum got out of the car. Uh, she dragged me back into the office, back up to see Steve, and said, I've just been speaking to Simon, and he's changed his mind. He would like that job. And I took that job on the condition that when I found a better job that paid more money, I could take, the, I could move jobs. That was, that was the pact with my mum, not with the pact with Steve. Um, uh, and ultimately, I never found a better, I never found a better job. But if it wasn't for her dragging me back, then I wouldn't be probably sat here. But then there's all sorts of things to that. So. Yeah, that's that's. It. I love that. I love, so, what was your thinking then? Why why did you turn it down? Uh, well, I I was a, there was a degree of ego. Um, a, a degree, massive amount of ego. Uh, the, the sum of money back then was three grand, uh, and I thought I was worth three times that from a salary perspective. Mum negotiated three eight, so I got paid three thousand eight hundred quid. The eight hundred quid paid for the mini, paid for the petrol to go in the mini to go backwards and uh, go backwards and forwards. But um, now I was I was eighteen, living at home, didn't really have a care in the world. Everything was being done for me. Uh, I was going, bloody bloody, you don't want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, like, yeah. last thing yeah. you want to do is get a job when you've yeah. just spent 16 years at school. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, I, I guess you know this guy. Uh, I, I think it's probably VJ. Simon and Mark yeah, are the VJ, best, yeah. at, best at what they do. Coaching helped me and my business tremendously. Here's a question then, Simon. A lot of people that don't have a coach think it's woo-woo and don't bother. But people who have a coach, such as VJ rave about it how do you overcome that question oh i don't need a coach i've, I've already i've already got here i'm doing this this and this so what what, what, what do you say to people who ask those oh, well, if, that, if that if that's their scenario it's thank you very much move on um i'm not i'm not going to argue with you about that if you are completely happy with everything that you're doing uh within your practice within your business then brilliant thank you very much uh move on um we have uh, within the mastermind community, when we are talking, uh, we have three levels. We have confirmation, information, and transformation. So your confirmation people are what you've just discussed. They have already done this. They've done that. They've tried everything. I can't do that in my world because it's going to fail. Um, my brother did that 16 years ago, and it was rubbish, or what, whatever rubbish they are coming up with. Um, if that's where they're at, they're at confirmation, then they can go away in a po politest uh, manner. They can go and darken somebody else's doorsteps. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. Um, you then have the information people that are coming to gather information and assess things, and, and they will make some progress. Um, and I'm more than I'm delighted to work with those people because they've got the open mind and, the, and the, they're working towards it. And then you've got the people like VJ that go for the transformation. So um, they grab the courage. Uh, they look at it and go, right, this is not working for me. This is where I want it to go. In order to do that, I've got to take some action. I've got to do some stuff. I'm going to feel out of my comfort zone and away, away they go. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not a preacher i'm not trying to convert anybody to any religion or anything like that they either get it or they don't get it i'm a lifelong learner i'm passionate i'm reading books constantly reading <laughs> listening to stuff podcasts etc etc because i know i'm not finished i've got well years ahead of me hopefully uh, in order to keep getting better in order to do that inspiring challenging and supporting that's the purpose i uh, love it and, and it, you know, you're super passionate aren't you um so we met we met Jenny. Uh, Jenny's been on my show, and uh, so she's saying that her business and life has changed immeasurably for the better since joining the Accountants Mastermind. Only regret is it. We, it's always the same, Jenny. We never do it sooner, do we? We never do it sooner. My regret is I didn't start my own business sooner. But hey, we're here now. We're having fun and we're enjoying it. We're getting to talk to amazing people. Um, so books. Have you got any books that, that you could recommend apart <laughs> from your own called Banish the Bottom? If we're going to do that, Simon, <laughs> right. mine's better than yours because it's got a handsome man on the front. Oh, no, 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 very, very much so, yes. Uh, <laughs> of course, yeah, ban Banish the Bottleneck is, is all about my journey from Greenstones and extracting me out of the accountancy practice in order to be able to do what I'm doing. There's some stories in there, my failures as well as my uh, successes. Um, if I'm picking other books, uh, life sort of changing books, there's a 
a, a, a great book called Drive by Dan Pink that changed the way um, I understand and, and worked with my team. Um, there's another brilliant book called uh, The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. Um, Keith is quite a direct character, a direct author, but I find myself quoting him uh, a lot. Um, E-Myth is another one. Uh, uh, Made to Stick by Chip and Dan Hitler. There's uh, there's thousands of, uh, thousands of other things. Um, employee Engagement, First Break, Call the Rules, is another one that I continually go, uh, go back to. Uh, Five Defunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Uh, I've got a problem with my team. Two team members don't get on. Do they trust each other? Is the fundamental? No. Okay, so what can we do in order to build trust? Because then we get commitment, conflict, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're the ones that instantly spring to mind, actually. But I could I could write a book about books, I think. Well, why don't you? Why don't you? That's why don't you? Yeah, or 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 a or a blog or or something like that, because because we all we all want to, um, you know, read decent books. Um, Jules has got an amazing question. What can I ask? Um, what size does your plastic have to be? Uh, what no, I said I said practice. What size does your practice have to be to use a business coach? It can be any size, Jules. Um, you know, Simon's just said that he uses a coach. I've got uh, two or three different coaches that I use. Um, you don't have to wait for anything to, to get a coach. Um, so, so yeah, um, shout out and, and find out a little bit more about coaching. Um, there's two of us here, eh, Simon? Uh, uh, very much so. And, and generally speaking, the, the size doesn't matter, uh, despite what most people say. In my world, the only thing that really matters is the budget, whether you've got the finance in order to be able to fund the coaching. Um, and if you want to work with somebody, certainly I would work on this basis. The first thing we do is work out what it is that you want to achieve. So get clarity over what it is that you want to achieve. And then if you haven't got the budget, then there's a conversation about how you get to the budget. So if, if anybody is worth, and, it, and you look at it and go, okay, well, I need to earn £20,000 a year extra or whatever. Okay, well, that's that's a long process. You might want to go and use somebody else in order to learn how to generate or, or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I've, well, uh, I'm thinking there out loud, but I've, I've got three people that I'm working with at the moment. I have always, I've had one for the last, well, 2003, I think was the first one, Paul Trimplin. So that, that's He's the, done all right, hasn't he? Yeah, that's right. It's, this is all his fault as well. When I think, yeah. When I think about it, he's done all right. Uh, it, it was he was at a contest, wasn't it? I saw I saw him briefly as he was about to go on stage. Yeah. Um. So, th- this this book that you've got, how do we get hold of it, and what is it going to tell us, Simon? Oh, Ban- Banish the Bottleneck is on uh, Amazon, or you can go to banishthebottleneck.co.uk. Uh, it is all about my the, the process that I use to extract myself out of my accountancy practice. Um, it's also predominantly the process that I use to coach uh, customers. There's loads of stuff in it. There's a story about a swimming pool, and uh, the, there's a story in there about the day I sacked somebody on a Friday. I sacked somebody, and on Monday they turned up to work. That's how good a job that I did sacking them on the Friday. Um, there's a load of free gifts, uh, templates, KPIs, uh, letters of expectation. There's a whole world of stuff for nine quid, uh, ten quid, nine pound ninety five. But yeah, it's on um, on Amazon. Audible. It's not me reading it because I didn't think people understand the Norfolk uh, paperback, uh, Kindle, hardback, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'll even send you a signed copy if you buy it. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. So, so for VJ, he's totally changed his religion. That's his Bible. So, so there you go. So that that's great when you hear that shouted out at you. Um. So, so, so tell me, this is this is this is uh, happened to me again this week. Is someone has bought my book and then took a photograph of it and then put it on LinkedIn, and it just blows my mind when I see that. How how do you feel when you see someone well, doing this that with your book? Is yeah. It was a labor of love, Ashley. So I started writing this book in 2012 and it was published in 2021. So nine years it took me to to write it. Uh, This is the third iteration of it. So there was two before it that didn't um, didn't get published. It was the one thing. I've ran marathons. I've cycled. I've done all sorts of stuff. It was the one thing that I've done where there was no real finish. So, you know, when you do a marathon, it's 26.2 miles. Yeah, you yeah. know where the finishing line is. Yeah. Whereas with this, you write it, you give it to somebody, 
they say, would it be better if it went with a, so you put that in and then you give it to somebody else. Well, this needs, and you think, okay. And it went backwards and forwards with the editor. And it was, I found it incredibly frustrating. It's like, I've finished, I'll go and do something else. And then the, they'd write back and go, no, you need to do anything. Ah. And then the day the email came through when they said, well, we could keep polishing it, but we think we've polished it enough. It was like, hallelujah, <laughs> that one's going to bed. <laughs> And I'm moving on with the rest of my life. Although I have got a bit of an idea about a second book. Good man. The second so, book. So here's the top tip for you then, Simon. <laughs> what you do is when you're writing a book, right? Because because the finish line for your marathon is um, outside the Buckingham Palace, isn't it? In, in, in yeah, London. The battle, the yeah. um, so what you do is you have a launch party. Oh, and you book, you book the launch party. <laughs> okay. And, and so what happens is... You, you're then starting to shout at everybody to make sure that it's done. And so like, right, so when do you need the final manuscript? I need it by this date. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, all right. It certainly gets finished. Yeah, it certainly gets finished. You do end up with sweaty palms um, and, and and what have you. But that that's how I finish mine because I totally uh, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I'd probably still be writing it now because, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. but it, it, you get it out. You get it. And that's, that's the thing. Um, so what's your... Um, what, what, what do you see bookkeepers and accountants struggling at the moment, Simon? Uh, the si similar answer to that, uh, and it's a big generic one really, is overwhelm. Uh, so as it stands at the moment, there are masses of opportunities. Uh, there's the worries around recruitment and finding people and social media and AI and cross-selling other people's services and advice. There's this massive opportunity out there. And because there's all these different things competing for our attention, our ability to introduce them, it's very, very easy. And I'm guilty of this as well. You grab it and you put it on your to-do list and think, oh, I'm, re I'm going to do that. And then what happens is the to-do list gets longer and longer and longer. And then you feel guilty for not implementing them. And that's where the overwhelm uh, comes from. So... Uh, having clarity around what it is that you are trying to achieve in order to prevent some of that overwhelm or some of that stuff ending up on your to-do list is a, is, a, is a massive thing. No, fantastic. And what's your top tip for an accountant or bookkeeper today? Uh, the top tip, apart from buy the book and uh, go on to uh, all the courses and all the rest of it, is to spend more time thinking. Okay, so what we do... To, and there's a brilliant, again, I can't remember where I got this from, but all of today's problems were yesterday's great idea. Okay, all of today's problems were yesterday's great idea. So if you think about those great ideas a lot more, and in particular, think about the second level consequences of implementing those ideas. So think more about the problem, then you'll come up with better solutions that solve the problems that you want, and you'll limit or reduce the second level consequences. So yeah, that more time thinking. Yeah, yeah, rather than rushing into something. Yeah, and the best the best way to think is to ask better questions, which goes back to the coaching conversation. But there, there are thousand and one different ways of coming up with those questions. But the better the questions, the better the answers, and the better the answers, the better the solutions. Uh, fantastic, uh, Simon. That's fifteen minutes gone, and then some. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've been an amazing guest. You're going to have to come back. And we Thank could you. just we could just natter all day. That was absolutely superb. Um, I've got one more question, but before I do that, I just quickly want to uh, go and shout about my guest next week. Um, and th this is a, I've got an interesting guest next week. It's uh, Umesh um, is coming on Soba. Um, now he's an accountant, and what he's done is gone and created a bookkeeping software package. So uh, really interested to have a chat with him, uh, find out how he's going and, and why, why he's done it. So that's interesting. I don't know if you know um, Umesh. No, I don't know. No, so he's, he's coming on next week. So my final question, um, which is what I ask all of my guests on this show, is when you were at primary school running around in your shorts, um, what did you want to be when you, uh, the, when you the, grew up? Uh, a fighter pilot. So I wanted oh, to fly awesome. fighter airplanes. So where we are in Wisbridge, uh, not a million miles away from here, there's Holby St. John's bombing marsh, uh, bombing range. So when we was growing up, one of the things that we very often did is we would take a picnic and we would sit on the bank uh, next to the bombing range and we'd watch the A-10 bomb come in and, and the Apache helicopters and all the rest of it. Um, and then the other way, uh, we're very close to Mildenhall and Lakenheath and Marham. So we'd get the A-10s and the A-15s and whatnot now flying over the top. So that that life, and it was Top Gun time as well. That was the, It was all that sort of thing. 
Uh, so yeah, very much um, fighter pilot. Uh, and then I very quickly discovered that I hadn't got twenty twenty vision, so that was never going to be a, uh, never going to be an opportunity. But um, yes, that was it. That would have been a cool job, wouldn't it? A cool job. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. yeah. But not that you haven't got a cool job now, <laughs> hey. I think, um, well, I like to think I'm helping more people now than what I would be if I was shooting them. But anyway, that's... <laughs> <laughs> some people might contest that. <laughs> great, great end to the show. Simon, thank you so much. Thanks for everybody uh, for uh, all your lovely comments. And uh, we will see you soon. And we'll be back next week. Thank you very much indeed. Brilliant. Thank you. We go another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening. You get out what you put in. Never going to lose, never going to win. As long as you're happy, you're always going to grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in.